Welcome everyone. We're glad you've joined us today. Today, Aquifer will be presenting our new Aquifer content to support student learning, cases and tools for your curriculum. Here's an overview of our agenda. We're gonna have an introduction, share new tools and cases, especially new formative assessment, neurology cases, clinical excellence case sets and expanded integrated illness scripts. We'll also show you how to make the most of your Aquifer subscription and we will have a live Q&A at the end. Some logistics for today's webinar. Feel free to use the chat function. Place your questions in the Q&A panel as we will have a moderated Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So here are our presenters and panelists. My name is Leah Romano, and I'm a relationship manager here at Aquifer. I will be moderating today's panel at the end with my colleague, Kate Hancock, our other relationship manager. Starting off, we will have Dr. Emily Stewart, our chief curriculum officer. Amos Esty, our managing editor, will also be joining in the presentation as well. Now I'd like to hand off to Dr. Emily Stewart, our chief curriculum officer. Thank you for joining us today as we discuss what's new with Aquifer. My name is Emily Stewart, and I'm the Chief Curriculum Officer. Additionally, I'm an adult hospitalist and Associate Program Director for the Internal Medicine Residency Training Program at Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth. Before we dive into the new courses, tools, and resources, I want to give a brief overview of Aquifer for those who may be new subscribers. Aquifer is a unique nonprofit organization dedicated to advancing health professions education through use of high impact virtual teaching and learning methods. Just in case we have brand new users joining us today, I want to highlight that our curriculum created by the consortium is developed in collaboration with our national educator associations like ComSEP for PEDS as an example. Aquifer cases cover the medical student curriculum established by these national organizations. Additionally, these same aquifer cases map to the curricular guidelines for both PA and NP schools. This ensures broad, comprehensive coverage of key conditions and patients. Aquifer was created by educators for educators. All aquifer's content is developed and maintained by a remarkable interdisciplinary team of educators working to ensure our cases and learning tools are accurate, evidence-based, and up-to-date and our network is growing. More educators are joining this collaborative team, including the areas of PA and MP education. Now, before we get started with the new courses, tools, and resources, it's important to know if your program is a curricular partner or limited subscriber. Curricular partners have access to all Aquifer content and resources, including all of the new material we are going to talk about today. More than half of our subscribers are currently curricular partners, so there's a good chance that you may be as well. If you're not sure, you can use the QR code that will link you to a list of our 2022-2023 curricular partners. If you aren't a curricular partner, have no fear. We'll talk about how programs with limited subscriptions can access their content as well. Did you know your subscription includes access for all learners at your program? Programs use Aquifer to support their preclinical and didactic phase learners, flipped classrooms and TBL sessions, core and elective clinical courses. You can combine content from across our courses to support your unique needs. Aquifer is continually improving and is building a next generation learning system to support our curriculum more broadly. What does this entail? A comprehensive clinical curriculum that serves tomorrow's clinicians through data-driven systems and efficient learning utilizing formative assessment. Now let's dive into that formative assessment system. One of the tools we are most excited about here at Aquifer is our new formative assessment tool, Aquifer Calibrate. I'd like to take you through a high-level overview of Calibrate and show how implementing it can help to create master adaptive learners. I'm going to start with a brief overview of the reasoning and pedagogy behind it. Calibrate is assessment for learning. Moving beyond traditional summative assessment of learning, test enhanced learning is a pedagogical approach in which students are continuously assessed and reassessed as a formative process. Test enhanced learning helps students identify weaker content areas in need of further study, as well as areas of relative strength on which to build further allowing for more focused and efficient study methods. 
Test-enhanced learning has been shown to improve overall student study behaviors and aid in metacognition, helping to create that master adaptive learner we all want in our students. Aquifer Calibrate intentionally connects learning and assessment with meaningful feedback, supports effective coaching, and provides clear direction for advancement, all driven by smart data. Importantly, the system must work equally well for both our educators and our learners, providing realistic processes and tools that can be implemented in today's clinical learning environment. Calibrate assessments are multiple choice assessments with a certainty rating for each question. They're short with 25 to 45 questions per exam, approximately an hour long. They're designed to be given two times during a clerkship. They're easy to administer with no proctoring required, and they're available at no additional charge with family medicine, internal medicine, pediatrics, and radiology subscriptions. With all of this in mind, let's look at a sample question. As you can see, Calibrate questions include a typical board-style clinical vignette and multiple-choice question, all developed, peer-reviewed, and validated by our expert educators in the Aquifer Educator Consortium. A key feature that makes Calibrate different is the certainty rating for each question. The certainty rating adds a new dimension to assessment results, taking feedback beyond simple right and wrong answers to provide a more accurate view of gaps in the student's knowledge. Embedded within the system and reporting, our new metric, the clinical learning calibration, provides students with a more granular and useful tool to assess their current knowledge base and applied understanding. The new dimensions of certainty and efficiency which serves as a proxy for the ability to recall and make a clinical decision in real time, in addition to accuracy, provides students and faculty deeper data for understanding cognitive competence. The Calibre system is designed to identify the gap between perceived and actual competence. This, we know, is the most dangerous gap for all of our patients, and it is critical that we help our learners identify and address it. These new dimensions of data linked to our curricular mapping converge in detailed reports for students that link directly to teaching points in aquifer cases. Faculty and programs receive high-level views of student performance and detailed views of cohort performance for curricular planning. With their complete learning picture identified, students are now armed with the information they need to create targeted study plans. Calibrate's detailed results help students take the next step providing what they need not just to find the answer, but to understand the clinical context and to leverage this information throughout their patient care experiences. For faculty and administrators, Calibrate provides the tools needed for students to create an individualized study plan, preparing them for meaningful feedback and coaching conversations. And importantly, these processes further support accreditation standards for mid-clerkship feedback. So in summary, in developing Calibrate, we addressed many of these challenges for you by providing a high quality, nationally developed, formative assessment system designed for clinical learning. We are currently piloting Calibrate for a variety of medical schools, PA, and MP programs. You can learn more about Aquifer Calibrate on aquifer.org. I'd now like to turn it over to my colleague, Amos Esty, the managing editor of Aquifer. Hi, everyone. I'm Amos Esty, uh, the managing editor at Aquifer. I work closely with the clinicians who create and update our content, and I'm excited to talk to you all about the new content that will be available to subscribers this year. Uh, so we have a lot of new and updated content going live in July, including a new neurology course, new and updated cases in our clinical excellence case sets, integrations that bring important clinical and basic science threads into our signature courses, and several new integrated illness scripts. So I'll start by talking about our new signature course in neurology. Neurology, of course, is a key topic in all health professions education, and Aquifer is really excited to expand our curriculum to include this course and better serve our programs, faculty, and learners. The course will provide coverage of the courtship guidelines endorsed by the American Academy of Neurology. The development of the course was led by a task force of neurologist educators, including the two lead editor editors of the cases, Doris Kung, an associate professor of neurology at Baylor College of Medicine, and Alexandra Hovigwimian, an assistant professor of neurology at Harvard Medical School. The cases are being written and peer reviewed by neurologists from academic medical centers around the US. Aquifer Neurology will provide concise, focused cases that will be a perfect starting point for facilitated group learning sessions. The 15 cases in Aquifer Neurology include eight entirely new cases, 
five cases that are being adapted from existing aquifer cases in our family medicine, internal medicine, and pediatrics courses, and two cases that will be shared from our existing aquifer radiology course. As with our other signature cases, the cases in aquifer neurology will follow a clinical encounter with interactions between a student, a preceptor, and a patient. Each case will include a brief integration with our basic science or clinical excellence curriculum, which I'll talk more about in a minute. They will also include self-assessment questions that ask students to apply knowledge from the case to brief patient vignettes. The case content will serve to better equip learners with the knowledge, skills, and attitudes needed to provide patient-centered care to their communities. Now I want to talk a little bit about Aquifer Clinical Excellence case sets. These case sets include both updates to existing cases and some new content as well. First, here's a list of the courses we currently offer. We have the courses focused on core clerkships and key electives for medical students, uh, family medicine, geriatrics, internal medicine, pediatrics, and radiology, and courses such as diagnostic excellence, high value care, and social determinants of health that are relevant to all students, but aren't necessarily covered in any specific rotation. We are expanding our coverage of these topics by grouping them into clinical excellence case sets. So we will have two types of clinical content. Our signature courses, which generally cover more discrete clinical areas, including the new neurology course, and the clinical excellence content, which is intended to introduce students to these really important topics that can sometimes be overlooked. Each clinical excellence case set will begin with a principles module that covers the core principles relevant to that topic. After completing the principles module, students will gain access to a series of short patient-focused application cases. These cases are perfect for integrating into preclinical and didactic phase courses, adding to a core rotation, or for building an elective. In addition to these clinical excellence case sets, which will provide extensive coverage of these important topics, Aquifer is also introducing just-in-time integrations of clinical excellence and basic science content into our signature courses to help ensure that this key content is reinforced throughout a student's core clinical rotations. What this means is that cases in the signature courses will have a page of new content that's tied either to one of the clinical excellence case sets or to Aquifer's basic science curriculum, providing just-in-time learning for students and allowing programs to ensure these key topics are covered without requiring more faculty time. Here's an example taken from case 29 in the Aquifer Pediatrics course. In this case, the editors on the pediatrics course board decided that a palliative care integration would work well as part of a section in the case that deals with delivering serious news to patients and families. There's a multiple choice question that asks students to think about the topic, and then an answer comment that includes a teaching point taken from the palliative care course. So students will have the opportunity to learn some of the principles of palliative care within this pediatrics case, integrating the teaching into an existing patient scenario. The benefits of taking this approach to integrating the content are that students will be able to learn and apply clinical excellence and basic science concepts in a way that makes sense to them, and the teaching will be consistent as they move from clerkship to clerkship. For students who take the full clinical excellence course, such as palliative care, the integrations provide additional opportunities to apply that learning. And for students who do not take or haven't yet taken the clinical excellence course, they will still gain some exposure to these critical, but sometimes overlooked topics. And all this is done in a way that should have very little time to each case. The combination of clinical excellence case sets and the embedded curricular threads can be used throughout a student's educational career. For example, in preclinical years, programs could use the clinical excellence case sets to introduce students to topics that will be relevant throughout their clinical training and give them some exposure to clinical scenarios through the application cases. During clinical rotations, students will have opportunities to recall and reinforce that learning through the integrations as they take cases on core clinical rotations. And as they transition to graduate medical education or take electives or capstone course, they can dive deeper into clinical excellence topics or group signature cases with similar integrations to enhance their learning. Finally, let's talk about Aquifer Integrated Illness Scripts. Aquifer published our first integrated illness scripts in 2021, and we've continued to add to the available scripts over the past two years. Each script covers one specific condition and includes a brief discussion of the epidemiology, the key clinical features associated with the condition, and the core scientific concepts associated with that clinical feature, plus pages that allow students to think about the implications for further workup and management of each condition. Each integrated illness script also includes a mechanism of disease map, these maps illustrate the relationship between the key features of a condition 
the associated basic science concepts. In the mechanism of disease map for asthma shown here, students can see the basic steps involved from an environmental trigger to a clinical presentation as cough or dyspnea, for example. There are 33 integrated illness scripts currently available with eight more on the way this year on the conditions listed here. You can find a full list of available integrated illness scripts on Aquifer's website. We hear from students so they get the best experience from Aquifer when cases are linked to other learning, either related to a patient in clinic, filling a gap in their experience, or as part of a group or class learning activity. And we hear from faculty and preceptors that they are short on time and often can't recommend content for individual students. This year, we will give students the ability to direct their own learning by providing access to the updated content library. Students will have access to a simplified version of the content library that faculty can already access from their Aquifer account, providing students search and filter options to help them find the cases they need to prepare for clinic, brush up on key conditions, and fill gaps in their knowledge and experience. Students will not see the final diagnosis for each case, but they will be able to search by patient demographics, clinical location, body system, condition, and discipline. They will also be able to create a to-do list from their content library to save cases to complete later and to organize their work. We encourage you to keep this in mind when creating case assignments. For example, if your program assigns a lot of cases in bulk, you may wanna consider assigning a smaller number of core cases and allowing students to select the cases that fit their needs or interests. Paired with Calibrate, this feature empowers students to direct their own learning using Aquifer's trusted content. Now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Leah Romano. Hello, I'm Leah Romano at Aquifer, and I'd like to show you a little bit more of what comes with your subscription. What I'd like to show now is that with an Aquifer institutional subscription, you will have access to the Aqueduct system. And the dashboard that includes the tools and content that comes with your subscription will appear on a page that looks similar to this. Each account is for separately accredited programs, and you can roster all users to that account. Let's show you the users page. All users must first be rostered into the account to have access to content and tools, and you can separate the users by administrators and staff, as well as students. So the tab that I'm showing right now is administrators, and you can see that there are different roles with different permission levels that you can assign your faculty and staff. You can also add students, and they have their own tab, and it's for all your students from first year to final year, so that means you can include your didactic level, your clinical level, as we have content for your entire curriculum. There are buttons on the far right and instructions to help guide you through it. Let me show you the content library, which shows access to all of the content that you can search through drop down menus and a keyword search. This allows you to familiarize yourself with the content, and it's also the first place to start when you want to create a custom course a unique function in our system that allows you to mix and match content from your subscription to make streamlined assignments and reporting. So take a look here on the top. We do have a variety of drop-down menus to allow you to search to find content for your curriculum from presenting problem, final and additional diagnoses to clinical focus, disciplines and location, as well as age groups and system. You can also start with the titles of the subscription courses that you purchase, either aquifer signature courses, such as family medicine, pediatrics, neurology, and more, or basic science disciplines, our integrated illness scripts. Whichever way you search, the content will winnow down from the large total that you purchase into what you're looking for. So let's pick something. Let's say we're focusing on women's health. I've used the clinical discipline dropdown, and the more than 200 cases has winnowed down to 26 matching items. From there, I can just look at the titles of the content that you can see is across many of our courses. I can also use the links on the far right and click on synopsis, learning objectives, and case summary to take a look at more detail. You can click on the title of the case to see more and dive in, or you can start making assignments from here and create a custom course. We have additional tools on how to create a custom course, but it starts from here from using the drop down menus or the keyword search and pressing the create course button on the right. 
In addition to our content and tools, we have resources that are available to help you sort so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So our Educator to Educator Resources Directory is listed here with webinars, blogs, and podcasts created by your peers to help make your job easier. There are hot topics that are sorted here for your benefit to take a look at. You can access it through the system and it takes you to this page to look more. So we can see here there are a variety of headers. So for example, didactics. If you want to assign an FM course while you are discussing a physical exam, that's an option that you can use a custom course or take a look at a tool here for that. If you'd like to assign an integrated illness script with a case and find the connections, that's another example. And you can also use our interdisciplinary content and fold it into your assignments. Those are some examples that are listed here. For our core clinical content, we've got activities, we've got suggestions on how to meet accreditation, we've got tips on our assessment tools, student perspectives, and a lot more that you can prepare. If you're trying to remediate your student, we've got some suggestions for that too, for targeted skills and topics that you may want the student to review. And then also we've got elective planning. So if you've got core content that you'd like the student to take a look at, we've got some of the suggestions there too. We also have a section dedicated for getting started and training tips for you too. We encourage you to take a look. Let's review your institutional subscription options here at Aquifer. We're gonna start with the curricular partner program, our most popular subscription option and the best value. You can see what's included is enhanced benefits, including our full library of more than 200 cases, including what's new in 23-24, such as neurology, clinical excellence case sets, embedded curricular threads, and Aquifer Calibrate, our formative assessment. There's a lot more that comes with a curricular partner program too, such as curricular planning and consultations, expert support and online resources, teaching tools and faculty development, and our unique Aqueduct teaching and learning platform. For more targeted needs, you can select the limited subscription option as well. A lot of great tools come with that too. What makes Aquifer unique is that we're a proud nonprofit. We focus on clinical reasoning and we build better clinicians through virtual case engagements. We're here to help. Now let's go on to our Q&A. Hello everyone. Kate and I are now here for the Q&A. So we just wanna remind you to put your questions in chat or the Q&A button. And we have some questions that some of you wrote in and we're happy to share some answers while you uh, write in your questions. Um, Kate, if you'd like to introduce yourself and if you wanna start off with your most um, FAQ that you'd like to share, feel free. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kate Hancock and I'm uh, along with Leah, a relationship manager here at Aquifer and I'm glad, very glad to see so many people here today. Um, I think the first thing I would say is because uh, a number of you very kindly uh, included questions or requests in uh, your registrations with us, um, I would like to share my screen and let the folks know who um, have expressed interest in individual courses and specifically aquifer neurology, how you can now review a sample case. So let me do that. And folks, you will see here, this is probably very familiar to most everyone on, on the webinar, that this is the Aquifer homepage. And if you go to courses, um, you will be able to uh, actually go directly down to Aquifer Neurology. If it pulls up, give me a second. And this is very standard for all of our course pages. We have your ability to sign in directly to your um, subscription on the right-hand side. You can get more information about subscribing if you're not yet a subscriber, or you can demo a case. If you click here 
on demo a case, you'll be uh, able to sign it up as to have a student experience in our single case public demo account. And when you do that, you will see this, um, which is a uh, the, the view uh, that anyone who registers for our single case demo account sees. Um, you can sample the um, integrated illness scripts, which Amos referred to, um, and you'll probably recognize if you're a subscriber, the other courses listed here. I'm gonna go down to neurology. And if you click there, you will see our new neurology course. And I'll just note that the average time on case is low because this is a brand new sample case. Um, and the average time on case is not um, less than a minute. But if you click in, um, you will then see um, Aqua, uh, neurology, Aquifer Neurology 2, 26-year-old female found unconscious of the initial history. And then it just so happens on the first card of this case that there is a question. Um, and then what happens in uh, aquifer cases when you submit an answer to a question? I'm just gonna guess on one. Um, what the student sees is the correct answer and then an answer comment and then the student can continue. Um, so uh, without needing to even contact me or Leah, you can um, go to Aquifer Neurology on the Aquifer website, um, click on the demo account, and you can, you know, by the, within the next five minutes, be able to see what Aquifer Neurology is going to look like a sample case. So, Thanks, Kate. Yeah. Um, can you go back to the courses page for just a sure. moment? Thank you. So we had a number of people ask questions when they registered for this webinar about a variety of our courses and what's available. Now, one way to certainly see what's available, which we'll show you in a moment, is looking at your own account. You may need to familiarize yourself with seeing what other courses were purchased through looking at either your courses page or the content library, which we'll show shortly. But some of what's new, maybe your account doesn't have yet. And so we want to show you on the courses page on the website. Um, Kate. Okay. So the main courses page has detail for all of the courses that we offer. And the formatting is very similar to the neurology page that Kate just showed in that. Um, so on this page, it shows our core content, for example, FM, IM, PEDS, geriatric, and radiology, and now neurology. Then after that, when Amos was talking about our clinical excellence case sets, all of those courses are listed there. And then below that, we have our partnership courses, um, such as Wise MD Surgery, Wise On Call, Readiness for Practice, and Care Addiction. And then below that, we have our integrated illness scripts. So one, as well as oral presentation skills and medical homes. So one place that you can certainly go to, especially if you wanted to see some information right now, is our website, aquifer.org, and click on the courses. You can get an overview of that content as well as an opportunity to demo. Another place to look at it is in the system, which, if Kate, if you can go over to my favorite page, which is the content library. Um, yeah, let me toggle. Yep, yep, you've got to toggle out of the student demo. Right. But showing some people part of the sample, behind the curtain. Behind the curtain in our yes. sample university. Um, so when you sign into your account, on the top left hand corner is content library. And if you click into that, you will have the opportunity to search the content that your account subscribes to. And so if you don't subscribe to it, you can that's when you can certainly reach out to us. We could um, show you a trial so you can see more. But you can see in the content library that there's an opportunity to select from drop down menus. You can also do a keyword search to find the content and look at the cases at a faculty level. So that means you can see all the answers, et cetera. You can also see on the right hand side a synopsis, learning objectives, et cetera. So this is a great way for you to type in uh, content that you're looking for. I wanted to make sure that I highlighted because some people were asking questions regarding Wise MD surgery as well as psych content. So, currently, under the clinical disciplines, we have some areas such as our psych content. So, we don't have a course yet um, named psychology, but we and psychiatry, but we do have content in some of our other courses. So, if you do a drop down, 
you can see that there's content that you can peruse and see how it meets your needs. If um, you have other questions regarding the content, we just did an overview answer here, please enter that in the Q&A or the chat. We wanted to make sure you were aware that the courses page, the free demos, trials and the content library are great resources available to look at what we offer and how you can utilize that. Did I miss anything, Kate, with that aspect? Of Not the with the content library, library and I don't, okay. I don't think you missed anything at all. I okay. do think that it's important, um, speaking with educators today, um, we all know that students, everyone learns differently and thinks differently. A lot of people love the content library because they can filter things. They can just type into the search box. They can click over and open up a synopsis of the learning objectives. One thing I like to emphasize besides the content library, because I think the content library is incredibly efficient, I do like to emphasize the educator resources. Um, this is really the place to go for our course boards, educators like ourselves, to tell, they are telling you exactly what is in their, in, in the curriculum that they have created and they actively manage. So for instance, um, even if, uh, even if it's one of our traditionally free courses like diagnostic excellence or high value care, there is an educator guide, there is a quick case guide um, and the, um, the, the course boards pull these together and they review them every year. And it's a very easy way, for instance, um, we are actually gonna be at American, uh, the Geriatric Society meeting this week um, in Long Beach. And if, if there happens to be an educator from geriatrics on the webinar today, know that you can go into your subscription if you have Aqua for Geriatrics and you can pull up a quick case guide, you can pull up the educator guide and you can look through that curriculum as a whole, all the cases together and you can see how it can map and fit into your own curriculum. And uh, a lot of folks um, are not aware um, that those educator guides are there, um, but that is another way for you get a, to get a very good idea of, of the end of individual course and how it um, might make sense in your own curriculum. Thanks. Um, I also wanted to add, there was one other question regarding um, neuroscience. So um, if you could go back to my favorite page, the content library. <laughs> content library. Um, the, so there's lots of things that you could consider. You could use the drop down menus to find what you're looking for, but you could also type in. But uh, when I did an uh, initial search, most of the responses came back directing us to our integrated illness scripts and basic sciences. So um, if, so you can see Kate typed that in and there are 25 matches. Most of them are with integrated illness scripts. That's certainly something that you could do to see how that content meets your needs. We also have a dedicated um, illness scripts page and educator guide as Kate was alluding to as well. So there's more information uh, available. Oh, there are other cases too. Um, yeah, I just typed in up neuro, at the bottom. Short, yeah. yeah, neuro. So there's there's content available to help meet your needs. And there's also resources such as webinars and activity guides and educator resources. We also offer peer consultations. So for those of you that were asking questions earlier on about how do I use it? How do I integrate it? Know that we have a team of specialists available to help you. It may start with Kate and I as the relationship manager, but we have peer consultations available in your area of discipline. We also have curriculum specialists here at Aquifer that could work with you on what your needs are, making sure that you're aware of how you can start right now looking and then how we can help you as well. Um, Let's see, some other questions that we received. One question we got was about grading and reports. So Kate, could you show how to view some of our reports? Sure. While um, I'll start off by saying Aquifer and Aquifer system doesn't offer grading. We do offer progress reports and opportunities for you to assess your students' work, um, but we'll show you our reports here and what's available. So how you access our first report, the course report, is by clicking on the title of the course. Uh, now, our faculty and administrative users have different roles, and those different roles allow you to see some different detail, and Kate might want to take the baton from there as you're navigating. Sure, and I just want to uh, let everyone know this is a, a completely FERPA-compliant account. No, none of these 
um, some of these people are real people, but they are not students and the results that you're seeing are not real student results. Um, what you have on the court, the standard course report is you can easily see um, via check marks um, whether a student has completed a case, um, if the case is in progress, this is 48% that shows that the case is uh, almost half done. If there's a red dot, that just means that the case hasn't been started. If you wanna have an idea, for instance, let's say that you um, assign um, 18 family medicine cases and you wanna see how Sean is doing, um, by clicking on his email, um, as it's registered in the system, you actually see what Sean sees as his course report. And you'll see here uh, time on case, whether the case has been completed, uh, the page is completed, the start date, the date last access, the completion date. If there's a summary statement for um, that case, not all aquifer cases, but most aquifer cases have a summary statement. Um, and then you can see um, if you use the sum summary statement in a formative fashion, you'll see the expert comment, which is um, what aquifer provides as a model to the student for those cases where a summary statement is um, included or, or, or part of the case. And what that allows you to do um, is very easily without necessarily directly interacting with a student uh, for those cases that have a summary statement. You can basically peek in and see what the student um, wrote. And you will see over the course of a clinical rotation and over the course of a clinical year um, improvement in a student's uh, summary statements, um, both because of, of the work that they're doing um, within uh, aquifer system, but more importantly, um, interacting with patients and learning from you all as educators. So that is the basic report. And to, re uh, to reiterate what Leah said, there is no grading in here. There are no scores, um, but you can definitely track students and um, via the um, via these course reports, if you set a deadline, for instance, for a certain number of cases to be completed, you can track that here. Lee, is there anything I missed? So um, not missed, but tacking on to okay. that, um, a lot of people tend to ask questions about, well, how do I make use of these reports? And one of the recommended functions that we have in our system is the capability of creating custom courses. And that typically starts on the content library page, but the report page is where you really see its benefit. So if you are faculty that is has specific number of students and a specific number of cases you want to assign, that's a strong benefit for creating a custom course, which is an invite only function in our system. So you as the faculty member can, let's say pick 10 cases that fit the assignment timeframe for those 50 students. And that report, anything that comes up red, you know they should have done it and didn't. Whereas if you're just clicking on one of our larger reports that tracks all students work over all time, something red may not have been assigned and that may not be, um, you know, the report, it just has extra work for you to sort through. So the custom, custom course allows you to streamline the assignments as well as the reporting. And Kate, I don't know if you were going to show something regarding yeah. that. But um, I just scrolled down. Uh, for anyone who is a current subscriber, um, you're probably familiar with the upper portion of this screen, which has all the signature aquifer cases. And the way our system is configured, if you create a custom course um, and you have permissions to see that custom course, they will be listed below the signature courses. And I wanted to come down um, for two reasons, to illustrate what Leah has said, but also to illustrate the fact that uh, one of the things that people ask, they like they say, I love aquifer, but you don't have a women's health course or you don't have an OBGYN course. And the reality is that actually we have a really excellent um, model, uh, women's health OBGYN uh, clinical rotation, uh, we can actually, if you guys write us at subscriptions at aquifer.org, we can share that model with you. But here we've created within Sample University that course. And I can show you what it looks like to, to illustrate what, what Leah said about the ability to pull together cases across uh, from across our curriculum. Um, and then the course report would look like this. So you would have um, all the course, all the cases pulled together from across geriatrics, from family medicine, from radiology, et cetera, from high value care, diagnostic excellence. And then you can click into the student report here 
and all those cases are gathered together the same way they are for a signature course. So there's a lot of power within the custom course feature. And the students can view their own individual student report as well. So if you ever are having a conversation with a student, there's um, consistency across that. Kate, would you mind going back to the courses page? Definitely. In, in Aqueduct. So some things that people um, are aware of, but we want to highlight, which is right at the top, if you can scroll just a smidge, not smidge too up. much. Yeah. Uh, um, so right at the I'll, we'll leave it right here. So just letting you know some buttons for the questions that people had asked. For those that are interested in WISE that may have WISE, just know that all the aquifer courses currently on this course page are listed from top to bottom. But if you subscribe to the WISE or CARE courses, there's a blue button at the top that would say launch and then the name of the course. So that is your way of launching to the separate platform for that extra content. And if you have any questions regarding how to navigate it or the content. Um, that's where Kate and I can certainly help. Um, so it's a different platform that has a different way of looking at the content there. But there were a couple questions about why. So I wanted you to know that it has its own navigating system and Kate's showing that now. And then also on the Aqueduct courses page, there are some resources that uh, we want to make sure you're aware of. At the top, the dive in making the most of Aquifer. Don't have to click on it, but it's a self-directed orientation for your faculty and staff. The educator resources has additional content for your faculty and staff, and the student learning resources are available for your students too. And it does include an orientation. So for those of you who don't wanna reinvent the wheel, there is an orientation there that you could make available to your students to help um, navigate them in the system. And we recommend that. Um, Leah, can I interrupt for just yeah. a moment here? Because I know that one of the primary questions we were asked um, by one of the people registered uh, for today's webinar had to do with the pediatric developmental milestones. Um, and I just wanted, in case the person who submitted that question is, is on with us today, to know um, that the pediatrics course board is aware that their decision to pull down uh, for now for updating the pediatric developmental milestones. They understand that is that this has impacted many um, programs and they are actively looking at um, building um, in the short term an alternative um, to re-add to Aqueduct um, so that those programs that have relied on the Pediatric Developmental Milestones um, resource can have it again. Uh, so just know that we that we know uh, and they know um, the course board that um, that this resource is missed um, and they are, are working on an alternative. And in the meantime, they have said to check out PEDS case two, as it may right. um, have some content to help uh, address those similar needs. Um, thank you for bringing that up, Kate. The, a lot of today's presentation focused on Calibrate. So we don't have to go into detail um, at the end now, but just letting you know for those who are asking about grading, reporting, assessing, how do I track or take a look at how my students are doing, Calibrate, um, is a, is a tool that we have created. It's finishing its pilot year and we would strongly recommend you take a look at it. We've put a link in our chat and we can certainly uh, arrange for conversations afterwards if, if you have any, but that's another opportunity to look at how your students are doing. Uh, we had a couple of questions regarding permitted, intended use, copyright, et cetera. We're not gonna go into detail right now. I think that would be an excellent opportunity for you to reach out to your relationship manager, Kate or myself. Um, however, we do have a subscriber agreement where permitted and prohibited uses are listed in the agreement and that's available on our website. Um, but if for those who wrote in those questions had a, a more softer element of, of that, of just wanting to know some recommended uses, just know that the educator resources tab on the page that Kate is showing has a list of educator guides with activities. And then Kate, if you can go to the website to go to the directory, this is a wealth of knowledge, our educator directory. Oops. Uh, we, we showed it earlier in the presentation, but we'll yes. reiterate it here. So our educator directory has resources and tips created by your peers. These are webinars, blogs, and podcasts. And this page is available on our website and also linked through our system. It just gives you that information so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So if you have questions about how to get started or what about clinic, what about remediation, 
How do I uh, use the integrated illness scripts? How do I handle curricular planning? There's so much there that you could take a look at, uh, and we highly recommend that you do so. And, and a lot of our content is targeted based on your peers. So specifically, we do have allopathic peers. We have osteopathic PA and nursing contributors sharing their wisdom. And so there's a lot of opportunity there. There's flipped classrooms, there's activities, uh, questions for further consideration, suggestions on assignments and meeting accreditation needs. Um, so that's available to peruse on our website or through our system. And if you need specifics, you don't, you know, you may not have time to look through the whole directory. That's where your relationship manager can help uh, point you in the right direction to have a conversation with the appropriate person. Kate, could you scroll to the network and just hover over that? Sure. So just reminding you that Aquifer has an educator consortium responsible for creating and editing content and looking to make sure that your peers and your students have the information that they need. So our network is across uh, US allopathic, international allopathic, osteopathic, PA, nurse practitioner, um, residency fellowship, and more. And our programs are listed here on our website. We're a proud nonprofit and we're happy to serve you and answer any questions that you have and they're listed here. So wanted to let you know that that network is there and they're helping um, evolve and uh, innovate here with us here at Aquifer. Um, those were the questions. So this is gonna be a, a final call. If you have other questions, please put in the chat or the Q and A and we'd be happy to make sure they're answered before we sign off. Kate, as we're waiting for any last questions, is there any last tip that you'd like to share? Um, no, I, I, <laughs> I think that I think that we've uh, we've covered a lot. I, I think we've asked um, those who are attending today to, to take in a lot of information. Um, I really encourage folks uh, to explore the website, but also never, ever hesitate to reach out to subscriptions at aquifer.org. Um, Leah and I and everyone else here at Aquifer are ready and able and very willing to, to help. Um, and we really, really gain enormously from speaking with current subscribers as well as potential subscribers. Thanks, Kate. There was a question that has appeared um, regarding, you know, adding students. Um, can you deliver the content uh, without uh, adding students to the account? I mean, the intent of the institutional subscription is to add your students so that they can do the work. It's a safe learning environment so that they are progressing through the content, enhancing those clinical reasoning skills. Um, and we do have additional information available in our subscriber agreement. Um, and we can certainly um, go into more detail uh, on a private call if that didn't address your needs. Um, if you could close out, Kate, by showing the, the subscribe page, there were a couple questions about, since we do have some folks here that are not yet subscribers, the subscribe page shows what subscription opportunities we have and how to be in touch with us. So just sharing that page uh, to let you know. Great. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for your questions and for joining us. We hope we answered your questions. Uh, if there are additional ones, we can certainly uh, reach out to you privately and get those taken care of. Thank you.